What does this mean, Professor of Law and the Arts? I would say, well, I teach the relations between law and the arts. What are those relations and why are they worth teaching? Law is the regulator, literature the regulated. Law is the vocation, literature is the leisure pursuit. Literature's disregard for law is much more complicated. Literature finds itself at odds with law and legal processes. Law suspects that literature and art look favourably on crime. Literature and art, for their part, despise law's perversely reductive, life-denying and punitive understanding of transgression. Law does not understand transgression's beauty. It holds art's celebration of the transgressive to be precious, misconceived, dangerous. The one is committed to the unfettered realising of our imaginative capacities, the other to the regulating of our words and deeds. Art exasperates law, law oppresses art. Where does this lead? To the imperative we are required to take sides. Different writers cast the choice in different terms. For Blake, it is God or the devil. For Nietzsche, it is the Apollonian or the Dionysian. We cannot dedicate ourselves to both. Law and the arts may each say to us, choose. But we can respond, no, we won't. Why submit to this imperative of choice? Socrates himself relented just a little. If we can come up with arguments to justify poetry, he says, right at the end of the Republic, then it can stick. Ask the question, what is lost to a society without law, without the arts? Law's purpose is to make us secure. Literature's purpose is to gladden our hearts. How absurd to be asked to choose between security and joy. We should strive for both. Artists will always force the boundaries of what is held to be art. It follows that they will also force the boundaries of what is lawful. Here, all is struggle. Values and principles collide with nothing conceded on either side. These conflicts are daily with us. Should artists who abuse actors, even commit crimes against them, be banned? Should their works no longer be shown or performed? Should artworks be retitled if their original titles contain racially or confessionally offensive language? Should we pull down statues that honour men and women whom we now wish to execrate? These are complicated questions. Art has its own moral force. Iconoclasm has its own creative drive. The object here is to seek to do justice to both sides, to make the best case for each in their mutual troubled contention. Law and the arts as a title is no more than a hybrid of two other titles, Union Contest, Law with Arts, Law versus Arts, Law and Arts United, Law and Arts in Conflict. Thank you UCL for providing me with the forum in which I may find a new dedication and let me also thank you here tonight for helping to mark an event of great importance to me and which has made me very happy, one in which I take great pride.